Today, we're going to be talking about the importance of performance marketing. People will continue to buy two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. At the start, it's very important to... Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Is that how you introduce the episode? Well, aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain. Arr. Hello, I and welcome I can hear back. you. SpongeBob. Yeah. Oh, no, we should have done that. SpongeBob. Yeah, correct. <laughs> welcome back to Horizon Podcast. Hi. Hi. You good? Pretty much just had lunch. You good? A bit full, actually. What did you eat? Um, chicken. Just chicken? Chicken. Oh, a full chicken. No, did really. you? No, I didn't. Oh, I love the rotisserie chicken that you yeah, get. Yeah, they're good, aren't they? It doesn't, it? yeah. Ask me what I had. What did you have? I had an enchilada. Was it good? It was okay. It was leftover from dinner last night. Anyway, episode, don't know. We're not going to tell you because I can't remember right now. Eight. Eight? Yep. Episode eight. So today we're going to be talking about the importance of performance marketing. So. What do you know about it? I think it's more your kind of forte, I suppose. I guess it's paid advertising. Um, yeah, it's anything that's done to generate. A return on investment. Yeah. I don't know how to put that into words, but I think I just, I nailed it. Yeah. So in our case, we split it down to three main areas. So it'd be like Google Ads. Uh, paid social. Paid social. Um, even influencer and email, actually, to be fair, fit into that. Into oh, it does? Categories. Yeah, I would say so. But influencer, if, you, if you're trying to monetize it via yeah. affiliate, um, that definitely comes into into that kind of category. Um, and yeah, what we're trying to do is maximize the potential return that you can get. So mm. um, again, it comes down to a good strategy to begin with, um, good research, thinking about how, you know, how it all ties together. Because, you know, I think one of the I think mistakes that people make is they try to do, they just think, well, one of these things is what I need to yeah. do. But actually... They all feed into other. one another. And I think this kind of marketing paid marketing is kind of like, um, what's it like? People love it because you can see a direct return on yeah. investment and you can track everything. Whereas with socials, people are reluctant as such because they're like, oh, well, we can't see a direct mm. sales come through that or, mm. you know, so on and so forth. So I feel like. Yeah. And I think you've got. You know, it's, it's about how you set those campaigns up and how you then analyze the data. Because, you know, one of the things that we can see is that you can generate a reasonable ROI from um, paid social, maybe maybe excellent, depending mm. on what you do and the price point of your product. Um, but actually, you raise the awareness through the, through video and images through paid social, but then people then you know complete the purchase through. Um, Google Ads because they then go, oh, what was that tooth whitening company <laughs> called? Oh, I'll search them online, complete the purchase. But if they hadn't done the Google or the, the the paid social, yeah. they wouldn't have got the conversion on on the so Google. So it all ads. works hand in hand. Really, you need yeah. to hop yeah. on them all. Yeah, because otherwise, you know, if you if you're doing that, you know, the, the, that initial cost for them to see that ad on Facebook, Instagram. TikTok, etc., is, is is you know far and away cheaper than it would be to you know go for teeth whitening on mm. Google as, as a keyword because also people don't tend to convert the first time. Yeah, how many touch points is it really? Seven. Seven. Yeah. So you need within those paid social ads, you need multi layers. You need a cold campaign. You need the remarketing for people when they've clicked because they've not bought the first time. Mm. You then need the the branded terms on um, Google to, to maybe complete the conversion. You know, you have to have all of that working. You can't yeah. just be like, I'm just going to do all of one or all of the other. Or they click from a Google, uh, Google ad, they don't purchase, but then they see you on social and then they convert through that ad. So, yeah. you know, it's all about like joining it all together and, you know. Just being got, present. Yeah, really. and having a budget and saying, okay, from this budget, we need to make X. You know, yeah. I don't think what we're finding is having all of that tied together 
is the is, best. Yeah, the best way to find success. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, some of that data that you're getting back off that helps to refine your other strategies as well because Google Ads is sometimes a good indicator, you know, what keywords are performing well mm. and what you're getting most traffic for is obviously what people are searching for at the moment. Oh, yeah. So, therefore, you can then say, we're going to start optimizing our organic content for what we know people yeah. are interested in. Because didn't you say the other day that the ads, are, the way the ads are going, the algorithm is changing because... Um, they say, what did you say? You don't really need to use the targeting features as much anymore. They say you don't need to, yeah. As long as your advert's really specific. Yeah, it will naturally find its it way to the right people. It, yeah. yeah, supposedly. Suppose, well, I mean, it's like anything. The yeah. algorithm's changing all the time. Yeah. But, but so, yeah, I, th I think there is an element of that. Does it work 100%? But yeah, I'd say probably not. I guess it's more of a riskier approach because mm. you can't then directly say, I'm going to target these people. No, and it, ultimately it comes down to you know, what, yeah, you know, as long as you track it and you just have a separate campaign for that mm -hmm. and then you're comparing it against the campaign where you have got targeting and stuff like that, you can directly see what well, that one's, I spent a £1,000 on that one, a £1,000 on that one, I made that from that and that mm. from that, which one's better? <laughs> it's the beauty and if one's working better than the other, just have a bit more budget behind it. Easy. Easy, is it's, it? Mm, yeah, it's <laughs> easy. You always say that. Easy. <laughs> it's easy for me. I'm probably downplaying it a little bit. I, th I think yeah. that's one of the things. Like you can downplay and undervalue yourself in, in these situations because it's, yeah. to me that is quite a straightforward thing mm. to do. But other people look at that and go, "I haven't got a clue where to start, or you know, yeah. what the angle should be." Like, um, oh, I've set up these ads before and they just don't work, and that can be because they're just not optimized in, in the correct way. Yeah, you know, you're not optimizing for the right, the right thing. Or so say someone's come to you. I'm running this ad. Like you say, people come to you. I've done it before, but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. They've got this ad. How are you going to optimize it from an ad that they said didn't work? First thing is we do is obviously an analysis of the account mm. and look at what they're currently doing. I got one yesterday where you know I can see what they're doing. I can see the return on investment it's getting. Some ads are working. Some ads are not. But they basically got a number of ad sets with just one ad, and it's the same ad in every single ad set. Yeah, it's just not going to work. You know, you need ad sets, different audiences, different creatives in that ad set. It needs to be optimized for the right thing. Like one of their campaigns is optimizing for people adding to their cart, but not converting. Mm. Whereas really, you want to be optimizing for people that are converting. You know, some of the on on they, you know they want to sell tickets. They're optimizing for clicks. Yeah. Well, no, you've got the tracking set up that if someone buys, and then what the algorithm will then do when someone buys, it will go, okay, we've got 15 purchases. Let's find more people that look like the 15 people that are bought. And then you're going to get and more. And then replicate it. And it's just going to grow. Whereas if you're just doing it for clicks, it's just showing it to as many people as physically possible. They're just going to click it and not convert. Yeah, I think that campaign I was looking at, it had something like 4,000 clicks. And like, eight conversions but clicks mean nothing no that's just an expensive way isn't it yeah. really you know if they got a thousand clicks and a hundred conversions yeah I'm not saying that's definitely going to be possible but in turn they've spent the same money mm. they've made an extra for them that would be something like an extra three grand yeah and i guess it's just understanding their aims then because they obviously yeah, didn't really know what they wanted. They don't know what they're they're optimized yeah. for, but that's not that. You know, they're good at what they're doing. Yeah. And this this is like an entertainment, um, hospitality sort of business, I guess. Mm. Um, you know, they're good at what they're doing is putting on the hospitality, the, the, oh, the yeah. event, and that kind of thing. But they're not. They've had they're dabbling at it. They're giving it a go. But they're, yeah, f for me, it's like. Actually, it's a few small tweaks. But have they got the time to do those small tweaks? No. And are they still going to do it in the right right way? Probably like, not. Maybe not. There's a thing with paid, isn't it? You kind of got to constantly be watching it. Yeah, you definitely do. Like, you know, because that audience will get tired. You know, if you've got one ad, you know, if you're targeting quite a small area, you know, a city plus 20 miles, let's say, mm. like... That's only going to be a relatively small audience. 
Mm. Three, four hundred thousand, let's say, with some interest. So it's going to be quite relatively small. You could show ads to all the relevant people in that in that space in a day. Yeah. So then, if they then for the next two weeks, you know, you're showing ads to them five times. That's that's okay. But if you show them multiple ads that are different, they wouldn't get bored of what Seems, they're seeing. Yeah. You know, they see a carousel with some information on, and then they see a video of what it's like so they can actually see oh that looks really good or you know then they get maybe a static image of some sort that is more informational Mm. you know if you're showing like a variety of different things then it's just it's it does just get a better result yeah you know when you've seen the same this will make you laugh so you talk about the same advert going over and over again the whole of tiktok um, you know, um, FemFresh, like the feminine hygiene project. Mm. Um, Molly Marsh from Love Island, she was like doing this like little skit, but it was being advertised on TikTok paid ads and it come up right. maybe every four <laughs> videos. I could repeat it. It was the cringiest video ever. Like ever. All of the comments on this were like, I'm seeing this like a hundred times a day. Yeah. Like get this off my For You page. Jingle game. Do you think? Yeah. I'm breaking it. I'm breaking it. Maybe that's what we should do. We should try and catch each other off, um, off. off B and then just be like, right, jingle game. All right. All Sounds right. good. Sounds good, yeah. <laughs> Courtney, what we got today? I'm going to take one earphone off. Yeah, I am as well. I think that's cheating from you, but I'm going to do it. All right. Don't forget, you can say your name. Okay. okay. Yeah, don't just shout things out. Toys R Us. Yeah. Well done, I suppose. They call it Toys R Us, Toys R Us, We're Toys drawing Rest. again now. Are we? So someone's going to be ahead again this time. Yeah. <laughs> Something Century Films. Play again. Dreamworks? No. Oh, sorry, sorry. Fox? No. Is it, um, it's some movies. It's something. Uh, <laughs> we're taking this rules. way too seriously <laughs> now. Uh, I think it's. Univ- not universal. It's Universal or something like, oh, what are they call Universal Studios? No. Warner Brothers? Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's what I knew it was that. <laughs> I knew you'd come and come That was hard, that. That was quite hard, that mm. one. I'm a celeb. That was me. No, it was. It was me. It was me. Is that VAR? I heard, well, hers was louder. I, I was there. Mine. I did I did it straight away. I think it was at the same time. She did it ages after me. <laughs> there were seconds in between I that. Too. I think you've got to do another one. We need to get VAR. Oh, honestly, honestly right. that was... Right, you, get that up on that camera after that this. Cam, You're yeah. going to have to send us that little clip of like 30 seconds because honestly, I got that as soon as it came on and she's like, I did it. And then it was like... Maybe it's because I done two, didn't I? You're not shouting. You're a sore loser. Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can hack loser, but that is shocking. <laughs> I can't wait to get that back up. Honestly, I get, I promise you, I was ages. Like it was, it was ages. We're talking about five seconds. There was about five seconds gap between me pressing it and you pressing it. Uh, I don't know. I Chloe, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was ages. I'll just, I'll just leave. <laughs> I'll just leave. Don't you make my face? All oh, right. Okay. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot on this. Whoever wins over the series. Yeah. Gets fifty pound Amazon voucher. That Mick has to give to us. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Better. Or any voucher of your choice, actually. Um. Okay. I'll donate it to mine to charity again. Did you? Did you? I did. What well, last one you won? Hero okay. of the world. Hero of the world. Oh, yeah. I did. <laughs> Two, one. 
friends. Yeah. I'm ahead. Are you? Did I not get my previous one? Yeah, but I got the first one. I wouldn't see this time. You won one. Uh, Unlucky. I could play that all day, it's, honestly. It's, it's, it's Seeing getting your like, reaction. I think. Yeah, it's good. I like in that little segment. I hope I people like, that like segment. it. I hope people like it. I don't know if it's. I'd like to keep that in. Let's see if Cannon and Courtney decide whether that can stay in or not forever. But yeah. I quite like it. I hope it does because I want the uh, prize at the end. What, the 50 squids? <laughs> 50 squids. <laughs> mm. Right, where even were we? It, that game gets my heart racing. It doesn't take a lot, does it? No, absolutely not. Anyway. <laughs> oh, Cohen's gone. Uh, right. How to maximise the performance. I think we've kind of spoken about this um, like omni-channel kind of approach, really. Like, that's kind of what I was saying before. Yeah. Like, you can't just rely on one thing. Like, it all kind of works. Hand in hand. Together, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably an important message because I think because they're different platforms that mm. you tend to use, people wouldn't see them to be used together. No. No, they think, like, oh, I'm doing Google Ads and I'm doing organic social and I'm doing this. Well, I'm doing like that. we said, think of it as touch points. Yeah. And your mesh needs to be consistent throughout all of those yeah. different places, doesn't it? So, you know, your ads need to be consistent, your branding needs to be consistent, the, the messaging needs to be consistent across all. So maybe an example of a message? Like, say the message overall was, like, promoting sustainability. Why would they be doing that? Because that would be like one of their USPs. No, but I think no. Generally, most people in performance, they're, they're a product. Yeah, they're looking they're, for a sale. They're, yeah, they're trying to get sales at this at this okay. point. So they wouldn't be sort of sustainability might be part of the messaging as a a USP of that particular product mm. or that holiday or that whatever. There's you know there's, mm. there's a sustainable element to it, but I don't think like. It's, that would be within the brand awareness piece. I would probably. How would you get the messaging wrong then? It could be that. Um, God, I'm putting me on the spot now. <laughs> <laughs> I think the messaging can be wrong if it's just like the creative's not right. Like that's yeah. wrong messaging to yeah. me because you've got, you know, you the imagery is not good enough or mm. it's not powerful enough. It's not strong enough. It's just mixed in with everything else that any. That everyone's seeing mm. you know, you've got to try and do things differently get your point across so when that person's clicking whatever the ad is it's costing you money every time someone's clicking so yeah. you want to make sure that they're the right people that are clicking so yeah, yeah you, you you're picking a group of people but i saw something the other day actually a really good point was you know demographic targeting based on age uh and uh, wealth, for example, mm. and it had, you know, Ozzy Osbourne Icon. and Prince Charles. Right. They're the same age. They've both got high net worth. No. But they couldn't be any more different in their. Mm. Ozzy Osbourne icon. Yeah, he is. Prince. But but the point is, like, yeah. You wouldn't be targeting them two people with the same no. products necessarily. That's so true. But. So that's, that's, a madness. A, that's a bit of a yeah. myth of saying, oh, okay, my product's aimed at people over 50. Well, unless it's something that's like medical that, you know, everyone had in that age group. Yeah. Or something like people, you know, you need to be more specific than yeah. that really. Because Proper niche down. Yeah, you need to be. As, yeah, you that's need, a good example. And that's the thing. You need to be as niche as you possibly can do in whatever you're doing. Be the expert on that particular, particular yeah. thing. Because... There are obviously, you know, there are products that appeal to you know the masses. Mm. You know, a lot of people and a lot of age groups that don't sort of fall into, you know, really kind of tight things like, <clears throat> you know, I guess like, you know, some some types of food maybe or whatever it is. Mm. But then some would because then you've got like. Dairy free, or you know, someone like um, uh, what are they called? What are the milk people called? Uh, Cravendale. No, not Cravendale. The ones that do the oat milk. Oh, Oatly. Oatly. Oatly, yeah. You know, they're technically, I suppose, they're targeting a particular group of people mm. conscious about 
health maybe or maybe about what they're eating like all the tolerances yeah. but also that they're still trying to move people the average people who are getting buying normal milk to try their but brand I, instead yeah that's so true so, Cravendale. Cravendale. <laughs> it's because we have Cravendale in the fridge. We do. We do. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think, you know, targeting is obviously really important within that. Like I said, because, you know, just because someone fits is a certain age or whatever. You know, yeah, completely. there's not a one size fits no, all. No, you've got And there's no market time. that is not saturated, really. So you've kind of just Difficult. got to break through the noise and... Yeah, you've got to do Be something that maybe looks a little bit different. Yeah. Or, you know, um, yeah, selling your benefits. Your, again, it goes back to those benefits, features, pain points, stuff like that. Like, mm. what is your product solving for those for those people? That's yeah. the strongest message. And you've probably got less than a second to catch someone's oh, eye. Oh, yeah, 100%. So yeah. always take that into consideration. Definitely. Definitely. Um, and it's then, it's then how you evaluate performance. Because what I find with our clients is, like, what, some people deem effective and a good performance is totally yeah. different to what another one is. Some people, all they care about is my, my ROI has to be over X. Really? Otherwise, it's not worth me doing it. Yeah. Other ones, like, you know, we want brand awareness. We're not as bold about the ROI because um, that comes, like, later on down the line. Yeah. So they, they run about acquiring customers. So they want to acquire a customer for £10. Mm. And they know that customer. If they can acquire that customer for ten pounds, that first sale might be might cover its cost. Mm. But then, if they buy seven times, because their email marketing is then good, so that's when it then comes into it. Once you've got acquired the customer, like how? What's their lifetime value? Lifetime value is a massive thing. Some mm -hmm. people massively overlook. You know, if we know that someone buys seven times, we can say, well. Don't worry about your, your ROI on the first thing. Say, okay, I'm prepared. I don't I don't need a return on investment of five times what I spent. You need it to be what you spent. As long as you that's good. Yeah. As long as you then do the rest of it right. So you get your email marketing in place, your SMS marketing, whatever it is, and you deliver a good service. People will continue to buy two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. Oh, for sure. And that's when you're going to make the money. Well, that's the most expensive part, isn't it? Acquiring yeah, the customer absolutely. in the first place. So. so some brands will be able to acquire customers really cheap. Some need the return on investment at the start, but they shouldn't do if the rest of their marketing mix is correct. Yeah. So it's and just looking what, at overall. And that's when we're saying, you know, that actually it's not just performance marketing isn't just that the paid ads at the start. No. Performance marketing then comes into your email marketing mm. after. Which all needs to follow the same messaging. Messaging, yeah. Messaging. And if you've got a quality product, people should want to buy it anyway, shouldn't they? So. Well, you would hope so, yeah. You could have a quality pr uh, product and crap marketing. Yeah, and, you know, people wouldn't... Like, you know, if it's something... Especially if it's a luxury item that people don't need, necessarily need. Yeah, if it's something that people need, like supermarkets... People just go in there and they, they go in every week because they've got to eat. Yeah, you buy what's on Club Card. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, you know, if you're selling teeth whitening, like people want to buy that. Mm. But if you don't remind them about it, it will just go out of their minds. And it's a luxury, isn't it, yeah. really? But people will buy it. Yeah. If you keep. And you play on your yellow teeth. You're playing on their insecurities, yeah. their pain points. Coming yeah. back to the pain points, isn't yeah. it, really? Yeah. Nobody wants yellow teeth. Yeah. Keep our mouths closed right. now. Everyone will be judging us. Um, Editor Callum, please whiten our teeth on this one, please. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it comes down to, you know, and, and, and that's where, from our point of view, at the start, it's very important to understand the client's expectations. What, what are they expecting? Mm. Because if we think we're delivering a really good job after three months... And they're going, this is awful. This isn't what yeah. I want. Then we've got a problem. So we yeah. have to do that work at the start. From the offset. Understand exactly, right, here's some ballpark metrics that we're going to be working to over this 6, mm. 12 month contract, whatever it is. Get those agreed so it's in black and white and always refer back to them. Yeah. Because then we can say, okay, we have, we're in line with what we're achieving. We're below, we're above. We're below because of this Something reason. Something needs to change. Or We're above by this amount we think you should put some more money into it maybe at this point yeah so we can push it even further reassess go again you know we, we do 
like that is constant yeah it's a really important thing i think and um yeah you you obviously got to evaluate what you're doing with performance that is what you live and die by you know yeah some people like i say they just don't care about any anything else i don't care how many people have seen it i care about how many people have bought it or yeah. subscribed or you know whatever it is that that call to action is that they're trying to to get and that's to fair do. enough if that's yeah, what they 100%, 100%. want but 100 percent. i guess it's they need to stop sometimes being so blindsided that maybe that isn't the best not for f- them no I, I think you know maybe they're smaller brands and that's what's important and they, they don't have the luxury yeah of being able to create great brand awareness because you don't have the budget to do it no that's the thing it all comes down to budget doesn't it like you know but if you can make that performance bit work and that then probably if they're willing to reinvest at that point mm. either you push that even harder and you grow that and then you reinvest in the, the more brand awareness piece but if that performance thing just works and they're just getting sales and then they go into a flow and then they're just getting sales and sales and sales yeah. like they're not going to do anything different really they'll think well why, why do i need to spend all this money on well, creating getting content? what we want yeah because that's ultimately what the goal is anyway yeah but actually, if you then had a good uh, organic social content piece, then maybe you wouldn't have to spend so much on the performance because people would be bought into the brand because of what they're seeing on social. And it's again, like you said, just nurturing it in yeah, different other Yeah, platforms. that's more of a nurture piece at that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. That's a really good point, yeah. So I guess... Round it up. Round it up, I suppose. <laughs> I've had enough. Have you? No, yeah, really. I've had enough. I quite like this. It's quite interesting, isn't it? I feel like you live and breathe a bit of paid performance mm. It's quite addictive. Like when something's working really well, like it's really like... I guess it's like stocks and shares, isn't it, really? Yeah, like it's, you're just chasing. But then the next day is like a horrible low because, you know, you've not met, you know, you've not hit any of the metrics or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's, quite, it's quite a stressful There's place, a lot though. of variables, but that also works in your favour as well. Mm. What can we change or... Like, yeah. Yes, yeah, it is interesting. So yeah, I would say with performance, it's you know again start with a really good strategy. Understand that it's you know it's multi-channel. It's not just mm. I'm doing Google Ads because it's not going to be as successful as it potentially could be. Um, make sure it's all consistent. The messaging, the branding, etc., across the different platforms. Make sure you're reporting, tracking the data. That's yeah. probably one of the most important parts. Definitely, and and you know, and interpreting that data. Yeah. As well. I think that's something as well because some people don't interpret the data in the right way. Mm. They're, they're, you know, unsure about what good metrics are or, you know, they're looking at it in, in, the, wrong, in the wrong light. You know, yeah. you need to make sure you understand the data, what it's actually telling you and what the end result really is. Mm. Um, yeah. Hopefully I didn't talk at you too much in that episode, but... I can tell you're passionate. I am. I think it's a good thing. It is a good thing. But no, I think I think it's interesting to know. And hopefully that was a nice, interesting episode for you. Pa- paid, like we said, I think you put in what you get out. Is that the right saying? You get out what you put in. You get out. I knew I'd said that wrong. Yeah. But I'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> I cool. tried. We'll leave it there. Leave it there, right? That That's it. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.